Hi, my name is Tony Santo and I'm a large format photographer. This video is all about my 8x10 experiment. Stay tuned to see whether or not this 8x10 adapter for my 4x5 camera makes the cut. My backstory on this project goes back to when I took a large format photography class at Appalachian State University in Boone, North Carolina. My instructor, John Scarlatta, unfortunately was diagnosed with terminal cancer, so he decided to thin out his camera collection while he was still alive so his family didn't have to deal with it. So I inquired about his field box cameras, and I was tossed up between this Zone 6 4x5 camera and a Deerdorf 8x10 camera that he had for sale. So obviously I went with this camera, and the two reasons for that was, one, this one camera was in mint condition. He had never used this camera. And two, it packed a lot of features that his version of the 8x10 did not have. So I definitely felt great about making this camera purchase, and I've loved this camera ever since I bought it. However, in the back of my mind, I've always wondered what it would be like to shoot 8x10. Now, I didn't want to go out and spend a whole lot of money to purchase another camera and another series of lenses to experiment with this, so I decided on using some of the limited work, woodworking skills that I have and building some sort of adapter that could take me from a 4x5 size to an 8x10 size. Now, I'm no Norm Abram from the New Yankee Workshop. However, with my limited skill set for woodworking and a table saw and a router, I managed to put together a 8x10 adapter for my 4x5 camera. What I did was I made it out of two pieces. I'm just going to slide those open and show you the two pieces here. Now, the film back separates from the actual, what I call the bellows portion of it. And the bellows part of it is just a series of boxes glued together and painted that fit onto the back of the rear standard of the 4x5. And the way that it does that is there are a series of notches here that are equivalent to the notches that you would find on the original 4x5 back. Now this particular piece where the film holder slides in was the most challenging to put together. The reason for that is, is that you can't be off very much as far as the flatness of the wood. And if you've ever purchased wood and worked with wood from a lumber yard, you know that it's not 100% flat. So even just this tiny little gap that seems like it wouldn't make any difference at all can actually let a sliver of light in. And so I did end up with that, even though I was very, very careful to try and machine the wood as, as best as possible uh, so that I wouldn't get light leaks, I still have some areas that may be questionable out in broad sunlight. So what I did to sort of mitigate that was I ended up putting some weather stripping in strategic locations. However, as you'll see later on, um, you know, it, it, it worked well, but there were still some uh, scenes where the film was exposed to some light that uh, was not intentional. So, to get this thing to work, all you have to do is pull the ground glass off and attach the 8x10 adapter into the notches of the 4x5 rear standard. And, as you can see, it attaches nicely and steps out that image circle to an 8x10 size. Now one of the features that I wanted to add to this film back that uh, my original camera had was a bail lever. This is really useful, especially with the large 8x10 film holder and trying to get that into uh, the camera. That can be kind of a challenge, and so this is really useful to, to be able to pull the uh, ground glass back away from uh, the back of the camera to allow that uh, to take place. After building my 8x10 adapter, 
it was quite clear that the greatest limiting factor in doing a project like this is the size of the opening of the rear standard. If that standard isn't wide enough, the image circle from the lens is going to be limited by any obstruction of that rear standard. And as you'll see from some of the examples that I have, I get a little bit of vignetting from the fact that my rear standard simply isn't wide enough to allow the image circle to project back onto the film plane. To test my newly constructed 8x10 adapter, I bought some Ilford Delta 100 black and white film and headed out to Joshua Tree National Park back in May of this year. My primary goal was to test the adapter out in open sunlight to check for light leaks. The first of four shots that I'm going to share with you was one I took of a large Joshua tree. I used my 210mm lens which almost covered the entire film plane except for the top corners of the image. That vignetting you see is the outer edge of the image circle. So while you could pull off using this lens by cropping the image later, this leaves no room for any camera movements. For my next image, I chose these two boulders and placed the camera at an angle to exaggerate the steepness of the boulder base. In this shot, I used my 300mm lens, which is a lens designed to cover the 8x10 format with room for camera movements. However, you'll notice that the left and right sides of the image are slightly cropped. This is due to the limitation of the rear standard opening that I mentioned earlier in this video. In addition, there is also some slight vignetting in the top corners of the image from some moderate movements I used to keep the boulders looking upright. The last thing you'll notice is that there is a light leak in the upper left hand corner of the image. As I mentioned earlier, the wood used to construct the spring back has to be completely flat. Despite not being noticeable to the human eye, my adapter allowed mere micrometers of light to leak, which was sufficient enough to spoil a portion of the film during the exposure. The third image is that of a chola cactus that was taken with my 210mm lens. Unlike the image of the Joshua tree that I took with this lens, the right and left side of the film ended up with vignetting. The reason why it happened here and not in the Joshua tree shot is that the bellows were extended from about 8 inches, which is the normal distance for focusing at infinity, to about 13 inches on account of this being a macro shot. So the additional 5 inches of bellows created enough of a barrier to prevent the image circle from covering the film plane. The last image that I'd like to share is my favorite black and white image from this trip. I used my 300mm lens with no camera movements for this setup. Unlike the previous images, I was the farthest away from my subject, which allowed for focusing at infinity and minimized the lateral vignetting. For this scene, the 300mm lens wasn't quite long enough to accomplish the framing I was after, so I ended up cropping the image in Photoshop, which was fine with me. All in all, I am really pleasantly surprised at how this image turned out. So what's my conclusion? Was it all worth it in the end? I loved using my 8x10 adapter so much that I just had to get my own 8x10 camera. Well, as always, thanks for watching.